Septic Arthritis Introduction Also known as infectious arthritis, bacterial arthritis, or pyogenic arthritis. It affects individuals of all ages, with a higher incidence in older adults and immunocompromised individuals. Site Commonly affects large joints, such as the knee, hip, and shoulder. Etiology Causative organisms of septic arthritis include Staphylococcus aureus. It is the most common causative organisms in both adults and children older than two years. It is frequently associated with septic arthritis following invasive joint procedures. Kingella kingi. It's most common in infants and children up to two years of age. It's recognized as an important pathogen causing septic arthritis in this age group. Streptococci. Various species of Streptococcus can cause septic arthritis. Streptococcus pyogenes, group A Streptococcus, and Streptococcus pneumonia are among the common culprits. Neisseria gonorrhea. It can cause septic arthritis, particularly in sexually active individuals. Gonococcal arthritis typically presents with joint involvement, skin lesions, and tenosynovitis. Gram-negative rods. Escherichia coli and Pseudomonas aeruginosa are commonly associated with septic arthritis. Infections caused by gram-negative bacteria are more prevalent in certain patient populations, such as older adults and those with comorbidities. Staphylococcus epidermidis. It's often associated with prosthetic joint infections and healthcare-associated cases of septic arthritis. Haemophilus influenza. It was previously a common cause of septic arthritis in children, particularly in those who are unvaccinated. The introduction of Haemophilus influenza type B vaccine has significantly reduced its incidence. Mycobacterium tuberculosis and atypical mycobacteria. Tuberculous arthritis caused by Mycobacterium tuberculosis is an important consideration, especially in endemic areas. Atypical mycobacteria, such as Mycobacterium avium complex, can rarely cause septic arthritis in immunocompromised individuals. Borrelia burgdorferi. It's associated with Lyme disease, which can manifest as septic arthritis if left untreated. Host factors of septic arthritis include advanced age, diabetes, immunosuppression, joint trauma, prosthetic joint implants, and underlying joint diseases. Pathology Inflammatory response Bacteria trigger an inflammatory response within the joint, leading to an acute inflammatory cascade. Synovial membrane swelling The synovium, the inner lining of the joint capsule, becomes inflamed and thickened. Increased synovial fluid production in response to the infection, the synovial membrane produces excess synovial fluid, leading to joint effusion. Joint inflammation and destruction. Joint swelling. The accumulation of inflammatory cells and increased synovial fluid causes visible joint swelling. Joint pain. Inflammation and the release of inflammatory mediators results in severe joint pain. Reduced range of motion. Joint inflammation leads to stiffness and restricted movement. Potential for cartilage and bone destruction. Without prompt and appropriate treatment, the infection can progress, leading to damage to the joint's cartilage, subchondral bone, and other joint structures. Cartilage degradation. Bacterial toxins and enzymes can directly damage the articular cartilage, leading to its destruction. Bone erosion. The infection can spread to the underlying bone, causing bone erosion and loss of bone integrity. Abscess formation. In severe cases, the infection can result in the formation of abscesses within or around the joint, further contributing to tissue damage and destruction. Joint deformity. Prolonged inflammation and joint destruction can result in permanent joint deformity if not promptly treated. Clinical presentation of septic arthritis. Joint swelling. The affected joint shows visible swelling, often accompanied by redness and warmth. Joint pain. Severe pain in the affected joint, leading to restricted movement and difficulty in weight-bearing. Systemic symptoms include fever, 
Elevated body temperature, usually above 38 degrees Celsius, 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Chills, episodes of shivering and feeling cold. Fatigue, generalized tiredness and lack of energy. Laboratory investigations of septic arthritis. Complete blood count. Elevated white blood cell count with a left shift, increase in immature forms, indicates an active infection. Elevated neutrophil count is typically observed. Inflammatory markers. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Elevated levels indicate inflammation. C-reactive protein. Increased levels indicate an acute inflammatory response. Blood cultures. Multiple blood cultures are obtained to identify the causative organism. Positive blood culture results confirm the presence of a bloodstream infection. Synovial fluid analysis. Joint aspiration is performed to collect synovial fluid for analysis. Cell count. Elevated leukocyte count, more than 50,000 cells per microliter, indicates an infection. Gram stain. Helps identify the presence of bacteria in the synovial fluid. Culture and sensitivity. Isolates and identifies a causative organism, along with its antibiotic susceptibility profile. Imaging studies. X-rays. Initial imaging modality to assess joint space narrowing, bone erosions, and soft tissue swelling. X-rays may not reveal early joint changes, but they can help exclude other conditions such as fractures. Ultrasound. Useful for detecting joint effusion, guiding joint aspiration, and identifying soft tissue abnormalities. It can help differentiate between inflammatory and non-inflammatory joint diseases. Magnetic resonance imaging provides detailed images of soft tissues, bones, and joints. Helps evaluate the extent of joint involvement, presence of abscesses, and cartilage or bone damage. MRI is particularly helpful in diagnosing early septic arthritis or when the clinical presentation is atypical. Management of septic arthritis. Emergency treatment. Joint aspiration. Urgent joint aspiration is performed to obtain synovial fluid for analysis and relieve pressure within the joint. It helps confirm the diagnosis, identify the causative organism, and guide antibiotic therapy. Empiric antibiotics. Prompt administration of broad-spectrum intravenous antibiotics is initiated to cover a wide range of potential causative organisms until the pathogen is identified. Common empiric antibiotic choices include ceftriaxone, 2 grams intravenous once daily, vancomycin, 15 to 20 milligrams per kilogram intravenous loading dose, followed by 15 to 20 milligrams per kilogram intravenous every 8 to 12 hours. Piperacillin tazobactam, 4.5 grams intravenous every 6 to 8 hours. Clindamycin, 600 to 900 milligrams intravenous every 8 hours. Antibiotic selection depends on local resistance patterns, patient-specific factors, for example, allergies, and the suspected pathogen. The duration of empiric antibiotic therapy is typically 2 to 4 weeks. Definitive Antibiotic Therapy Adjust antibiotics based on the identified pathogen and its antibiotic susceptibility profile. Once the causative organism and its sensitivities are known, switch to targeted therapy. Common antibiotic choices for septic arthritis caused by specific pathogens include Staphylococcus aureus, Methicillin sensitive, Nafcillin or Oxacillin, Staphylococcus aureus, methicillin resistant, vancomycin or daptomycin, streptococcus species, penicillin or ceftriaxone, gram negative bacteria, ceftriaxone or cefepime. The duration of definitive antibiotic therapy is typically four to six weeks, but may vary depending on the severity of the infection, the specific pathogen, and the patient's response to treatment. Intravenous antibiotics are initially administered, and a switch to oral antibiotics may be considered based on clinical improvement, patient tolerability, and the specific antibiotic regimen. Surgical intervention, debridement, and drainage. 
Surgical drainage is performed for abscesses within or around the joint. It helps remove purulent material, reduce bacterial load, and improve antibiotic penetration. The procedure is performed in conjunction with antibiotic therapy. Joint lavage. Washing out the joint with sterile saline is done to remove infected material and debris. It assists in reducing inflammation and removing bacterial toxins. Joint replacement. Total joint atheroplasty may be considered in cases of severe joint destruction and persistent infection control. The procedure involves removing the infected joint and replacing it with a prosthetic joint. Joint replacement is typically performed after the infection has been controlled with antibiotic therapy. Prognosis and complications. Prognosis. Prompt diagnosis and treatment are crucial for favorable outcomes. Delayed or inadequate treatment can lead to joint destruction and chronic infection. Complications. Joint deformity, secondary osteoarthritis, systemic infection, septicemia. Septic arthritis and HIV. Septic arthritis is not commonly associated with HIV infection. However, individuals with HIV may have an increased risk of developing certain types of infections, including opportunistic infections. In rare cases, HIV infection can be associated with septic arthritis, particularly in the advanced stages of the disease or when the immune system is severely compromised. Factors contributing to the association between HIV and septic arthritis include impaired immune function. HIV infection weakens the immune system, reducing the body's ability to fight off infections. This can make individuals more susceptible to bacterial joint infections, including septic arthritis. Opportunistic infections. HIV infection increases the risk of opportunistic infections caused by organisms that are normally not pathogenic in individuals with a healthy immune system. These infections can include septic arthritis caused by atypical pathogens. Bloodstream infections. In individuals with advanced HIV disease or poorly controlled HIV infection, the risk of bloodstream infections, including bacteremia, may be higher. Bacteria can enter the joints through the bloodstream, leading to septic arthritis. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.